Man, that went way out there. Carolina rig on the other. Three-way on this one with the float that will pick it up. Probably, I don't know, a foot or so off the bottom. This is a very shallow cove or flat, and it's even shallower because it's winter pool. This water's way down. Makes it a little rough to land a fish walking down them loose rocks. Throwing a bunch of bluegill tonight. We've got a shad kill started, and uh, quite frankly, shad's probably the worst bait you can use right now at this particular point. I'm gonna throw one bait to the left in much shallower water, not too far off the bank, just in case they aren't cruising close. If they're not on an active feed, I like to be over that drop off out there. But if they are on an active feed, they can come pretty dang close to the bank. No oily bait tonight at all. I'm typically no fan of any kind of striped bass or yellow bass, white bass, but I'm on a no oily fish kind of night. I feel they're on a low calorie diet right now. And uh, so I'm gonna throw it out there. Matter of fact, I ain't never caught nothing on one of these stinking things. I'm gonna have this kind of through out that way. It's gonna be real shallow as well. Typically, when I throw this shallow, I get a lot of turtle action, channel cats, small stuff that'll chew your bait off. I'm hoping it's too cold for those guys tonight. Water temps are in the mid 40s. Temperature's been below freezing for a while. It's officially cold, hard winter, and the shad kill has started. I don't consider this no place for a monster, but who knows where a monster is, you know? Typically, I don't get a lot of big fish in the winter. I get consistent fish. Uh, my catch rates are better than in the summer. Typically, my big fish come in spring and fall. The rest of the time, I'm just fishing. But who's to say where the big fish is? Because if everybody knew that, there'd be a hundred boats parked over the top of them right now, you know? And even if you do that, fish still might not be willing to eat. I got rained out uh, last Saturday, so here I am. This is actually a Tuesday, but y'all see me make that how to catch catfish in the cold video. And the main thing they were hitting on was bluegill. I never got a bite on gizzard shad. Uh, I did get one fish on frozen skipjack. Wasn't much. And I noticed when I was there, I seen some shad swimming sideways. And I really didn't realize the water was that cold yet. It hadn't been that cold of a winter to me. Well, I seen a guy on Facebook ask somebody what the water temps here were, and they are in the 40s. Cold enough to be killing shad. What's happening is, is these shad are so easy, these fish are sick of them. They're already full. Uh, they're just picking them up and eating them. And it's hard to get fish to bite anyway when there's shad laying all over the bottom because there's already too much for them to eat. But it seems like if I do have success during that time, it's on these alternative baits. Baits that I don't do that well on in the warm water periods, like cut bluegill, crappie, cut carp, drum, stuff like that. Stuff that normally when skipjack is better <clears throat> and shad is better, those baits ain't worth a dang other than a turtle or a channel cat. But this time of year, when the shad kill happens, I don't know if it's the fact it has lower calories because it doesn't have all the oils or if it's just something different that they're not sick of. I don't know. But it seems to be uh, that's when these alternative baits work best. Typically I throw my cast net and I start grabbing the bluegill and throwing them back in the water keeping the shad. Well, today I threw the shad back in the water and kept the bluegill. These fish are tired of shad right now. The only downfall tonight is a couple days past the cold front. We're in high pressure. We got a lot of rain from the cold front. The river was up. Now the river has dropped. Typically, these backwaters ain't great during a drop. Here again, 
these backwaters are great places for shad. And so when the shad start getting killed off, they're going to be here. So, like I say, I know there's food here just because of the shad kill. And this is a place for gizzard shad to hang. So despite the water drop, despite the high pressure, these fish are on a mission. And that's basically to clean up all these shad. Easy pickings. Problem is, is they're full because of it. Well, I got four baits out there that are different. No oil, lower calorie, something that if they're already stuffed, they can say, hey, I can kind of fit this in, I guess. So that's what they're going to do. Shad kill 2020. It's just beginning towards the end of January. Sometimes we get it as early as December. We had a fairly mild winter through November and December. It's here, though. It's cold. I'm going to go sit in my truck. And I'm going to crack the window, listen for one of them clickers. All right, people. That's one reason I pulled to this spot. I'm chilled out in my truck. Got the heater running. Got the window barely cracked. It's well below freezing. I'm taking it easy. Got just enough window crack to hear them clickers. The life of a cat fisherman. Just chilled out on the Facebook here, checking out some of the catfish hotties. Waiting on that bite from old Mr. Whiskers. This girl's single. Yeah, I can see why. Don't need none of that. She wouldn't even make a good third shift waitress. I'm gonna hang out and be patient. Not a great place to fish, man. It's fish to death, but it's winter. And I'll be honest with you, all the best fish I caught in here were during winter, so. You never know until you throw. Well, I'll tell you this, people. Turtles ain't even biting tonight. Not a click. It's a quiet night. Just waiting on that bite. I like fishing for catfish. Catfish is in my soul. All I want to do when I wake up in the morning is go down to the fishing hole. Hop in my truck, head down to the river, throw my baits out and hope that they deliver. I like fishing for catfish, yes I do. Come on, kitty catfish. Them old catfish can stay up later than me because they ain't got to work tomorrow. All they got to do is whatever they're doing right now. No responsibility other than being a catfish. Must be nice. As a cat fisherman, I got to try to catch them and still keep a job. There's no kind of better excitement than this complete silence going on right now. And all of a sudden, one of them clickers starts a screaming. It's a rush that you just can't get enough of. You don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know if it's going to happen. But you know it can. That's what keeps you doing it over and over again. You know if you keep doing it, it is going to happen. And it's just a never-ending addiction. When it does happen, you never know how big of a fish it is. Most of the time it's small fish, fun-sized fish. 
but so many times a year you pick up that rod and pull on it you get something that pulls back real hard that's what it's all about even in a spot like this I know statistically it's not much but that is the Tennessee River out there and you just never know what can happen it's just too quiet it's part of it people a lot of people don't know the waiting game involved here you gotta be able to chill and be patient you just gotta enjoy being out here it's like playing the lotto chances of a giant is slim but every time you throw them baits you just never know what you're gonna win anything's possible in catfishing and it usually happens when you're least expecting it when you've gotten lazy and quit checking your drag tension not changed your line out checking it for nicks or using the same knots and leaders too long without retying your knots then stuff goes wrong my knots are pretty fresh because this ain't my first rodeo I'm not gonna get done like that again oh no no there she goes This is on the three-way rig with the float bluegill head. There's one moving around out there. He's starting to get a bit of a gut on him. Feeding up on them shed. Well, people, it's 10 o'clock and the bite is slow. I got the right bait on, that I do know. Am I in the right spot? That I know not. Typically a shad kill bite isn't too hot. I'll give it a few more minutes, just sitting around, then I'll pack on up, head back to town. One fish tonight, is all my baits would deliver. 
but I got to do a little time here on the Tennessee River. It's an addiction, people. It ain't always good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's real bad. But you get so many days a year that are good, and sooner or later, you'll get the best you ever had. Doing this right here is a lot of never knowing, but you keep in pursuit of those fish and just keep on throwing. If I wasn't making videos, I'd still be right here. Long as I'm not at work or trying to sleep, just go to the river. I'll be somewhere near.